Hi, this is Soup, Science in Soup, where we will scoop into the science and serve you the knowledge as spoon by spoon. And here I am with Mr. Bruno, Bruno who is a famous musician in Thailand and he composed a song for so many television programs and stage plays and lots of things. Talking about music, we have music since the old age. It was known that prehistoric people already have music. It was even known that ancient music have many genres with components like pitch, rhythm, dynamics, and texture. Music and any other sounds share one thing in common, air as a medium. It is the vibration of the air of different frequencies and amplitudes that we know as sounds. We are all born with ears, two of them to be exact. They allow us to listen to the sound that is under the amplitude of 160 decibels. Or otherwise, if the sound is beyond 160 decibels, it will just pop our eardrums. And also, we can listen to the sound that is in between the frequency range of 5 to 20,000 hertz. And what I am speaking right now is the speech, another type of sound. And there is uh, other random sounds that we call them noise. They are all sounds, but only music is considered to be artistic and meaningful while others are just random to our ears. But what distinguishes music from other random noises? How do you distinguish music from any other sounds like knocking on the door or just tapping? Well, normally, I mean music, it can be considered also music if you say like an even sound, but I think the music is a... Normally, from my my point of view, is uh, I try always to create a melody. It's a combination of notes that together will uh, express some feeling. Uh, because I come from Italy, so we very into like uh, uh, melodies, you know, the melodic melodic part. Of it. So I think music is everything it has has a melody, and uh, and uh, of course, and together with the harmony. So this will be so. What the difference with noise is, which sometimes even noise is considered to be music, if you put it in part. For me, music is considered to be you know, a melodic part of you know, when there's a melody, there's a harmony, you know, chords. And, yeah. People have since produced sounds from basic instruments and developed them into more complicated instruments that we have today. But it's this as recently as 1860, after the invention of phonograph in 1857, that the first human's voice was first recorded on the disc. Following the records, the French songs, All Claire de la Lune, if I can pronounce it correctly, was recorded in 1860, becoming the first song in the history to be recorded. The phonograph is the first device to be able to record sound and was meant to record only and not played back. Later, it was succeeded by Thomas Edison's phonograph. It sounds a little bit similar, but it's a different thing. And phonograph this afterwards. The phonograph is very different from these two inventions because it can be played back while phonograph and phonograph this can be played back whenever we want to even though David Edward Hughes in England and Emil Berliner and Thomas Edison in the US invented the first carbon microphone yeah I know he has a lot of inventions he invented they invented the micro the carbon microphone in 1877 but it was not until 1960 that the world was introduced to this kind of microphones, the one I have here. 
it is the one that I used to record this episode. It was the kind of microphones called a condenser microphone. It was invented by C. Vent, an employer of the Bell Telephone Company. It was until 1923, after the invention of condenser microphone, that an electromagnetic microphone was invented. The first one is called ribbon microphone, and after that it was succeeded by magnetophone that is developed by H.J. Round and improved by Alan Blumlin and Herbert Holman, who released the HBA1A, which was the best standard of the day. At this point, seeing the waveform is still impossible. The computerized recording wasn't developed until 1957 by Max Matthews of the Bell Telephone Company again. Since then, so many sounds have been recorded digitally, but we still can't answer why music is different from any other sounds. Why does it take us so long to develop a criteria that can separate music from any other kinds of sounds or otherwise random sounds? It is because we still didn't know. According to differencebetween.net, the criteria we have today to differentiate music from any other sound is still very, very, very vague. It is so vague that it said that music is a harmoniously organized form of sounds with different pitch of different durations while noises are just sounds that are annoying the sounds that are unwanted the sounds that are meaningless wait but still what is harmony and what is annoying by the way Some music are known to be annoying to some people and so pleasing to other people. Take rock music for example, especially heavy rocks. These types of music are known to be so annoying, so frustrating to listen to to many people while some people love it to their hearts, especially when groups of people, babies. Yes, infants. The infants are known to sleep better when rock music are played. The vacuum cleaner sound also produces the same result. Why? Because the sounds of these music and the vacuum cleaner resembles the sound that infants hear when they are in their mother's tummy. But once these infants get older, their desire of rock music started to fade away and only some people still retain them into their adulthood. Another criteria for the sounds to be harmony is to have regular waveforms and frequencies. So no sudden changes in frequencies or amplitudes whatever. Well, it's not always true. Take Whitney Houston, I will always love you for an, an example. It started off with a low melody and slow beats before changing its pace to be very fast and higher pitch. It's not just this. If you look at the modern music listened by most children and teenagers today, you will see lots of songs with irregular waveforms and pitches, elements, of random sounds. But still, lots of teenagers and children today enjoy them to their hearts. The irregular waveforms of the sounds and sudden changes in the frequencies is what is usually characterized as conversation disturbances. We know that many animals and humans use sounds to communicate. Elephants is known to use low frequency sounds that is disturbed through their feet to communicate with their relatives or their friends or their peers. Also, dolphins use the sound to communicate too, but they just use high frequency sounds to communicate with each other. 
Human, in contrast, uses the sounds that is hearable by our ears that is in between 5 to 20,000 hertz to communicate. And that is what is called speech. And so the irregular waveforms and sudden changes in the frequency of, of the sounds it is what is usually characterized as conversation disturbances. Yes, anything that is irregularly interrupting our speech or our conversation, you or me or anyone is having with one another, anything that comes in between can be considered noise. As said by the difference between .NET, noise can obstruct, garble, and contradict the meanings of humans and animals' communications. So basically, it is quite logical that we will hate something that is coming in between the conversation that is disturbing our conversation with our peers. The sounds can become unwanted when they are meaningless and very loud. It is, it is because that these sounds are interrupting the meaningful thing you are concentrating to. Does this just make you a little bit upset? Yes. I think most of you will. Because you are so concentrated with what I am saying so hard that anything that comes in between can become noise. Even though there was a lovely Beethoven's classical song, Ode to Joy. Also, the sound that is a low deep sound resembles whispering. Whispering is the act that we usually do between small groups of people. And so anyone that is coming around the crowds and they are walking around, these people are called the third person. And so these whisper means nothing to them. They has nothing to do with it. And so the sounds that resemble whisper will sound the same, meaningless to them. Also, it is possible that listening to very, very, very loud music or sound can cause destructions to our auditory nerves and our ears. So it makes sense when we think that there's something that is very, very loud, like, like the drills or something, can make us so upset and so irritated. It is, it is because they are disrupting your ears. So it is very usual that you would avoid something that is harmful to your ears. According to CDC, exposure to sound levels that exceed safe listening levels such as rock concerts or band practice can cause hearing damage if it occurs frequently and for a long period of time. Listening to portable media devices such as compact disc or mp3 player with very high volume turned on above 85 decibels for long periods of time can cause similar damage. In the school setting, children and adolescents can be exposed to sounds that can damage their ears such as in the bands or shop class or attending school events such as dancing athletic events with excessive sound levels turned on. Construction and maintenance activities in and around the school can also expose students to harmful sound levels. So if you have muffled or distorted hearings, difficulties hearing sounds such as birds tweeting, crickets chipping, or alarm clocks, or difficulty understanding speech during telephone conversation or while participating in group conversations, or pain or ringing in the ears called tinnitus after exposure to excessive loud sounds. You must see immediate medical conditions. If you don't have these conditions, congratulations, but take your headphones off. Some of you that was science in soup right now may have put the headphones on for so long amount of time. If it's too long after you finish this episode, you can just have your ears some rest. You can just take your earphones off and just stay with silence. Stop. If you 
you are so focused with this video that you found this music as being noises, then you must subscribe to Science in Soup so we can serve you more knowledge when there is no. Take a stop, please. Yes, okay. So we can serve you in more knowledge when there is no noise. Thank you, Mr. Bruno. If you, if you want to check out his awesome channel on YouTube channel, click in the link, click the link in the description below where you can find all his great composition of music in his, in his channels. And also, don't forget to subscribe because next time I will scoop into more science and serve you the knowledge, spoon by spoon.